What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Scoutology Podcast. I'm your host and the founder of Scoutology, Quentin Mayo, and we are back with another one. This is episode two of the new and improved company brand that I am launching, that I have launched, called Scoutology, and our goal is pretty simple. We're here to develop and discover the future of basketball. Last week, we got things started with a... uh, an excellent prospect, I believe, somebody that's gonna have a a big time future in the game of basketball, and his name is Ian Lazarevsky. If you have not checked that out, please go give that a listen, go give it a watch as well as on YouTube and on Substack. But today we're gonna be talking about Kareem Lopez from Mexico. Now, of course, I can't move to Mexico and not, you know, touch down in Mexico to see what Mexico has to offer. And I found a prospect by the name of Kareem Lopez that I really think, has a bunch of potential he deserves to be talked about more of course and that's the entire premise and goal of this this podcast and this brand is to bring attention to players who may not be getting the the attention or national recognition uh that that they deserve and you know there's a lot of great basketball players out there especially internationally and that's where that's what we're focused on here and today is kareem lopez's opportunity to get some limelight so before we get started I want to encourage you to do a few things. Number one, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and give me a like. If you like the content, you can give it a like, uh, subscribe, and turn on the notification button or hit the notification bell. You can, uh, I think, select between personalized notifications or you can get all notifications, which lets you know anytime I drop anything on this channel. I prefer to do all notifications because if I am subscribed to a channel that I like their content, I wanna know all the things that they have to offer, all the things they have to drop. And if that is something that you can say when it comes to what I am doing right now with Scoutology, I encourage you to do that. Also share this with people who you know love basketball, real hoop heads. If they're they're lukewarm basketball fans, I was gonna say you don't have to share it with them, but actually if they're lukewarm basketball fans, I say I say you should share it with them as well. Hopefully we can swing them over into the to the deep end. We can get them on the uh, this side of the spectrum where we really, really love basketball, breaking the game down and just finding the future of basketball. So follow on all social media platforms as well, Instagram, Twitter, and I think that's all I have. Oh, and of course Substack. Scoutology.substack.com is like the home page is the landing site for scoutology the written content the actual scouting reports and breakdowns are only available on my Substack, and i'm releasing a brand new thorough scouting report with kareem lopez in this breakdown in this podcast that i'm doing right now that is only going to be going to be available on Substack. so make sure you check that out i've also got a 10 category uh breakdown that i use to just discuss and project uh the players that i do scout and if you want to check that out Substack is the place to be. Um, if you see me looking around, I got some uh, geckos and lizards that have been attacking me all morning. So I'm trying to watch my back a little bit to make sure they don't make an appearance on camera. Because if they do, it might get a little messy on cam. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. They, one, once we were setting up, my wife and I were down here trying to get the cameras and everything going. And a gecko literally fell out of the sky right into my uh, my microphone bag. My wife ran across the the uh, terrace area down here of course you know me i ran across the the terrace as well because that was ridiculous it was crazy these these geckos and lizards in mexico they have no shame and they have no fear so we're gonna try to play it cool we're gonna try to share this space i'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys what i want to talk about and discuss kareem lopez and i'm gonna get out of their way so they can have all the space that they need to do whatever they're trying to do out here uh so without further ado Let's jump into Kareem Lopez. So number one, Kareem Lopez uh, is 16 years old. He's born on April 12, 2007. And I hate starting so formal because I'm not trying to give you like this whole Wikipedia breakdown of him, but I do want to acknowledge his youth. He is 16 years old, similar to Ian Lazarevsky. And of course, uh, with Ian, I was watching his film from the FIBA European Championship. Kareem, I started watching his film from the FIBA U16 American Championship. Uh, tournament and he was just phenomenal I'm just gonna run through his stats really quickly 20 and a half points uh, in the FIBA U16 Americas which led all participants in the FIBA U16 Americas 12 and a half well 12.2 almost 12 and a half rebounds that was second in FIBA U16 he also had two and a half assists and 2.8 blocks which led the U16 Americas tournament once again he also had four double doubles throughout the entirety of the U16 uh, which once again, led all participants. Number two on the double doubles list was Cameron Boozer. You might have heard of him. 
really really amazing prospect and son of carlos boozer uh he's gonna be coming out in the 2026 class as well i think it's the 2026 class uh he'll be coming out in 2026 but he had three double doubles kareem lopez from mexico he had four and the highest scoring point the highest points output so the most points scored in a game during the fiba u16 came from no other than kareem lopez he put up 32 against uruguay uh, and in that game, he attempted 17 free throws and he made 12 of them. So at this point, forget about the stats. You want to know who he is, what is he about, what position he plays. So let's get right into it. Kareem Lopez is a six foot eight wing, six foot eight power forward that because of the teams that he has played on, he's actually started a lot at the five position because he has been the biggest player on said teams. His club team is, and please, those who know how to pronounce this better than me, don't butcher, don't butcher me. But he plays for Juventud Badalona. Juventud Badalona. I hope I'm saying that right. I've been practicing my Espanol a little bit. He plays in Spain for Club Juventud Badalona, and uh, he's on their U16 squad, their cadet squad. But he's also played up to their U18 uh, squad as well. So played up two years because of number one his potential and number two his size and uh he had a pretty decent tenure when he was playing up with them uh about five months ago was it five months ago may june july august yeah about it's august 29th so yeah back in may he had a pretty good uh run while he was playing with them and playing up he changed his game a little bit because you know playing up you know if you don't have maybe the, the comfort or the confidence to play with the bigger and the older guys, you know, sometimes you may change your game just a little bit. And we'll get deeper into that. I'm just so excited. I want to make sure I'm putting everything in its proper place. But uh, he's a 6'8 forward, super, super large hands. I'm talking like... I'm talking like Kawhi Leonard size hands at for a 16 year old. Like one of the first things, one of the things that's most intri intriguing to me when like scouting players, Scoot Henderson was a player like this for me as well as like your hand size. If you have really large hands, it allows you to do some things on the court that not everybody can do. Uh, you have a certain level of control with the basketball that not all players have. Uh, of course, palming the ball and all those things. Like he's able to make passes. I was talking about Scoot, but also Kareem Lopez, able to make passes and handle the ball at a different level because of how massive his hands are uh, but yeah 6'8 uh, pretty good athlete uh, super large hands big feet his his body and his frame uh, pretty good for 6'8 he's not 6'8 super skinny to where you're like oh you know I don't know type energy he's 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 a solid 6'8 and when watching him in the FIBA U16 Americas he played against of course Team USA which on that team has Koa Pete uh, and Cameron Boozer, which I think are two players that are very similar in terms of their makeup and in terms of their um, uh, their frame, their ability. Like when I'm looking at Kareem Lopez, I'm considering him like Mexico's version of Koa Pete and Cameron Boozer. I'll, I'll say that again because I feel like, you know, cer certain people know, like, Cameron Boozer could go number one in 26. Cole Pete could go number two or number three. Like, these are two of my favorite prospects in the 26 class. Uh, of course, AJ, who's 16 as well, just a phenomenal basketball player. And we'll talk about him some more as well. He went crazy in the U16s uh, too. But I really feel like he's like Mexico's off-brand version of Cameron Boozer and Cole Pete. Now, Cameron Boozer is clearly more filled out. Uh, in terms of his strength, like he has, he's a legit 6'8", 215. Uh, and I would say uh, Kareem is maybe a hair shorter than Cameron Boozer, but a hair taller than Co Pete. Uh, and in terms of physicality in those three, I would rank them number one. Cameron Boozer's physicality and frame is just NBA ready now. Kind of reminds me of like when Paolo Bencaro was coming out. He's always like the size of a grown man. That's where I look at it with uh, Cameron Boozer. Two co-peats, still a little more filled out than Kareem Lopez, weight room, diet plan, things of that nature. It's clearly prevalent in, um, in what they have going on in their preparation for the NBA. And then I put Kareem Lopez third there, but in terms of height and size, he is comparable you know, to those other two prospects, which I think says a lot because we're talking about guys who are projected to go top five. Now, when you're projected to go top five and when you throw out things like, oh, I think he's comparable to uh, Cameron Boozer or some of these other guys, 
now we have to start talking about skill. And I don't know if I said this earlier. I think I said, I did say this earlier, like he's an off-brand or almost a extremely raw version of those other two. So here, we'll start with what I call is a three-on-three. -three. The three-on-three -three is his top three attributes against his top three progressions. I'm not going to say his cons, like pros versus cons. I have three categories that he's really good at right now, three skill sets that he has a good, a pretty good mastery on right now, and then three of them that need the most work to take his game to the next level. And reminder, full-fledged breakdown, uh, 10 category spreadsheet, uh, projected impact grade, and uh, a description or breakdown of the three-on-three in, in written form available on Substack if you'd like to read along while I do this. So just a, just another PSA and encouraging you to go ahead and check out the Substack. So number one, his biggest pro right now is his defense. His defensive impact is his calling card right now. Now, of course, like I said, because of the t size and, and the youth of the teams that he's played on, he's had to play more five than four. He's more of a four than a five but his, his defensive impact is undoubtedly his calling card right now. And the way he is able to block shots, and of course, here we go back to the size of his hands, allow him to make some spectacular plays on the defensive end that you just don't anticipate him making. I've seen him block Cameron Boozer in phenomenal fashion. I've seen him block, you know, name any player. Like, there, no players that he's come against just have been able to have been have have been too much of a match for him to defend the rim against uh he he's blocked guys uh around the wing on three-point attempts when he's had to cover a bunch of ground and maybe one or two strides and meet that ball on the release point and block it and then head in the other way and transition like he's he's made those blocks he's he's made really solid blocks defending the post and the low block and also he's he's made spectacular blocks in transition where he's had his back to the basket and he's backpedaling and his, the offensive player is coming towards his chest and he uh, goes straight up, stays vertical and is still able to reach the apex of the shot attempt and, and, and get a get a block and then turn the possession onto the other side, going the other way. Like he's, he's really phenomenal on the defensive end, specifically from blocking shots. And one thing I appreciate about him in that vein is that he has the motor and the effort to commit to the defensive end. You don't get a lot of players specifically in this this current generation and age and I don't want to sound like Mr. Old Man on my soapbox like oh these kids don't play defense anymore but like really kids don't really play defense anymore guys don't really care about the defensive end they care about the highlights they care about the step backs the side steps the dunks the ankle breakers and then on defense you kind of check out I mean we've all watched AAU basketball we've all been a part of AAU basketball we have seen how how players approach basketball now it's how many points can I score and not enough how many stops can I get I said this last uh, maybe a week and a half ago when discussing Ian Lazarevsky another player and if, I, if you can tell I have a type another player committed to the defensive end he gets a lot of steals he wants to turn guys over he wants to bring intensity to the defensive end and it's all about how many possessions can we steal from the other from the other team the more possessions we can steal from our opponents the more opportunities we have to score the basketball maybe our offense is not as good as the team we're facing but if we can get 10 more possessions than them, it gives us a better chance to win the game. And that's something that I do appreciate about Lopez. His defensive impact is phenomenal. Also, when when he uh, when he's guarding the post or when he has to switch on defense, his mind, you can tell, is always working. He switches off seamlessly. He fights in the post for positioning. He doesn't just let guys get underneath positioning and and, and post up and, and comfortably shoot over, shoot over him. Now, he's not... He's not impossible to shoot over, but he's always contesting in a way that that makes you proud as a coach, makes you proud as a fan, makes you proud as just period, a fan of basketball. He's he's going to commit on the defensive end. Uh, man, uh, and, and of course, if you're watching this on Substack or YouTube or Instagram, you're going to be able to see some of the clips of what he does on defense. He is so proficient at blocking shots right now and staying vertical that it's that it's clear that, okay, 
now what else can we work on? How else can we take your game to another level? Because defense is going to get you so far. Your size is going to get you so far. And that is some, these are two things that you can't necessarily teach uh, uh, players to do, is, is to commit on defense, to go hard, have a, a good motor, and continue to go after it minute after minute, second after second, quarter after quarter. And you can't teach size. Right there, this Kareem Lopez is already on my on my watch list because he has a great frame and he plays defense. Those are those are just two things. Number three, or uh, not number three. Well, I guess my number my other pro was his size, which I've already talked about that uh, when discussing uh, his comparisons to Cameron Boozer and Kobe. Uh, let me run through my notes to see if there's anything else I want to add. I don't I don't think so. Just to to reiterate, some intentionality in the weight room for him would go a long way. Uh, but he's by no means skinny or fragile. He just needs a good weight, a workout plan, and some 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 peanut butter and jelly, some 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 carbs, and I think he'll be just fine. Uh, if Cameron Boozer is 6'8", 215, which is what he's listed at, which yo, he he looks a little stronger than 6'8", 215. He might be like pushing 220 right now, Cameron Boozer. But if Cameron Boozer is 6'8", 215, I would say Kareem Lopez is 6'7 and a half. Uh, six seven and three quarters and maybe 200 205 i think that'd be a safe bet for for his size right now but still 16 years old already a great canvas for for any team or coach to work with in terms of taking his game to the next level uh, my third pro other than size and defense it's is intangibles Effort is noticeable every single game. He has a great motor. He runs the floor extremely well. He's fighting for loose balls. He's fighting for rebounds. He's grabbing the ball off the rim and advancing it in transition and, you know, two or three dribbles. Because not only is he, does he have a, uh, not only is he fast, but he has the, the stride. Is that my mic? Test mic one, two, three. I hope my mic doesn't, didn't mess up. But he has the, these very long strides, almost Giannis-like, and by no means is he Giannis. But the way he gains and, and covers ground uh, when he moves up the basketball floor is is very elongated and smooth, like a, like almost like the Silver Surfer or something. And some of you guys don't know who the Silver Surfer is, but he, do, he does cover a lot of ground, and he, he does the dirty work as well. Loves to bang down in the paint loves to get and grab rebounds he'll dive on the ground for loose balls i think it was a game was it was it uruguay was it spain oh, i can't quite remember the game but i know i have the clip uh it was a tight game last maybe 40 seconds of the game he's at the top of the key uh, and i believe he was anticipating a ball rotation for a three-point attempt to maybe cut into the lead or tie the game but one of his teammates shot the ball and as soon as the ball is gone from his teammate's hand he flies a beeline down the middle of the floor in the half court set goes through the crowded area of the paint it's at least it's at least it's at least six guys in the paint just just bows elbows shoulders knees and toes trying to get the trying to get the basketball and somehow he cuts through all of them the six eight superman looking guy dives through saves the ball while falling out of bounds and then creates another possession for his team in the clutch. Like these are things that if you're a coach, if you're a scout, if you're a GM and you're looking for, for players to add to your team, you want to build a team, you want guys that sacrifice like that. Like it's clearly not about just getting a bucket and going home to him. It's like, I want to win games and I want to win them by any means necessary. So his size, his defense, and his intangibles, those are the three top pros that I have for him. Again, shameless plug, go to uh, scoutology.substack.com to see this full breakdown and see my 10-category scouting report. He's, he finished my 10-cat uh, with a 61% projected impact grade, uh, 30 and a half points out of 50. And that is basically taking all the 10 categories that I have, size, athleticism, finishing, scoring, his jump shot, ball handling, passing, defense, intangibles, and potential, and grading those out of five to a total of 50. And then uh, his projected impact grade is his score out of 50. So right now, uh, and through, you know, at, at this current point, he, he graded a 61% on my 10 cap model, but you can check that out on scatology.com. Um, but let's talk about his progress points now. Um, and I don't want this to sound like his jumper sucks. Oh, that's a terrible way to start this. I'm not, I'm not saying his jumper sucks at all, but I'm gonna start with his jump shot in terms of what he needs to progress at. 
proficient proficient jump shooting at his size would be absolutely mesmerizing because he already has the defense down and if you can draft a 3 and D guy we've heard this for, we've heard this for years 3 and D 3 and D 3 and D 3 and D every team needs a 3 and D and at 6 8 at 16 years old we don't know how tall he's going to be but if you can play defense you can block shots and you can shoot threes you have a roster spot point blank period you have a spot on the roster and he's working on his jump shot it needs a lot of work though uh it has potential but it's not there yet he has games you know mind you he averaged 20 and a half 20 and a half points in the u16 americas like he he can score the ball but like he he has games where he can get hot from three but no two jumpers look the same his feet are all over the place um, he doesn't have a, a large or even, I would say, even a, a, a hairline significant, borderline significant dip in his jump shot. You can tell by his free throws, like, it's pretty obvious that he stands straight up. Uh, if you ever watch Wizards basketball, which I know a lot of people who are listening to this know me from covering the Wizards, you know how Kyle Kuzma at the free throw line doesn't bend his knees at all? That is similar like his his mechanics on free throws are similar to Kyle Kuzma's in terms of a lack of dip uh and I think he could he could benefit from that because of the fact that his release point and the arc on his jump shot aren't where they need to be where you look at a Kyle Kuzma he still shoots cookie jar so he's still elevating his elbow through the shot and reaching in that cookie jar for a nice high release point but he just doesn't bend his knees on free throws for some reason it's kind of weird but Kyle Kuzma you know everybody's their own player but that is something that I've noticed like he he doesn't bend his knees a lot his feet he doesn't bend his knees enough. He doesn't use his legs enough. His feet are all over the place. Um, has sort of a straight line arc to his jumper instead of the arc that is more advantageous to making jump shots. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, he's a and he's a flick shooter. So he's not he's not uh, a shooter that's holding his follow through at this point. It's more of a oh my gosh, all these ex wizards or current wizard comparisons. Like uh, a, a poor Zingas, for example, KP very rarely holds his fo his follow through on jumpers. It's more of a flick, and then kind of look at it like, is that going in? Is that going in? He he needs to work on holding his follow through on his jump shot. Um, during his film during FIBA U16, during his time as a cadet with uh, Joventut Badalona, uh, you you see him try things like sidestep threes, step back threes. He is not there yet. He is not there yet. His shot off the dribble is not there yet. But you can tell that he is practicing these things. Like you can tell, this is my overall read of him and like where he is in terms of his his progress as a basketball player. Is like <laughs> one day he woke up and he was six foot eight, and he was always he was always he was always like wired to play hard, always wired to give effort. But he just hit a crazy growth spurt to where he's like, now I'm six foot eight. And he has to grow into the skill set of what his size has opened the door for him to do on the basketball court. Mind you, 16 years old. Now, he has some moments where, like I said, he can get hot from three and make some impressive jump shot. I mean, even when he's making jumpers, he's not hitting anything. Like, he's not, it's not you know hitting the rim off the glass and he is just splashing wetting these jump shots so it's 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 there like he definitely has potential to be a to be a 3 and D basketball player at a very high level especially at his size um but his jump shot does need some work just it just needs some work it does um anything else on his jump shot uh not much elevation when he shoots as well uh, and you can sometimes, this is sometimes nitpicking. I prefer uh, a jump shooter who does get decent elevation once shoot, like once they're in their shooting motion. Uh, I think it goes a long way in terms of your range. I think it helps in so many different areas, but it begins to become a little bit of a nitpick when you move, uh, when you move up in height, if that makes sense. So like if, you know, Kevin Durant's not going to need as much elevation as Steph Curry is going to need on a jumper. 
or you know your six eight your six nine guys feel like you know i don't have to jump as much because i'm already up here that's understandable but i do think kareem lopez could benefit from more elevation on his jumpers especially because his release point isn't as high as it should be and he's more of a straight line shooter i think these are a lot of things he needs to get his elbow up and through and then his elevation would make his life a lot easier especially when we're talking about having to go up against guys as you get older who are your size and while he was playing up uh with Badalona, you know playing with the u18 team these are grown men if you're not having an open jump shot you know you're no longer the center here and you're not you don't have an open open jumper you have to shoot over guys now and that's going to decrease your probability of making a shot if you're not getting the elevation and arc that you need and in, in elevating your release point and using that elbow to lift your shot like you should be so yeah not a lot of elevation but he as you will be able to tell from the clips has made some nice shots he has uh, made a, he made a couple shots in the FIBA U16 Americas where he's knocking down threes in transition. Uh, he had one on the right wing where he, uh, I want to say, gave a jab step, couple dribbled, then turned around to retreat back to the three-point line and flick his wrist and let a three go by. Like it was, it was nothing, and it was it was it was wet. So I, I had to, I had to give credit where credit was due, but. Yeah, his jump shot needs some work. Another thing that needs some work, which is kind of the most disappointing part so far about the scout for me, is his shot close finishing. Um, at his size, he shouldn't be missing the bunnies that he does. He just he just shouldn't be. He shouldn't be missing the the close shots that he does, especially at six foot eight, especially going against inferior defenders, specifically in height. He misses entirely too many shots around the rim now a lot of that you know can be remedied by uh more of a commitment to understanding angles just i mean we can do old school mic and drill you know what i'm saying just being under the basket and just repping angles 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 left side left hand uh, uh, uh low low corner high corner just getting used to the spots on the on the backboard that allow the ball to go in just repping those and i think maybe and I don't know this to be true or not, but you know, sometimes when you have always been the tallest kid, uh, you start to overlook the things that come easy to you and you try to look to the things that are more difficult to master. So if I'm always tall and I know I can, you know, fall into 20, 30 points just by, you know, shooting layups, I'm gonna possibly overlook just the easier part of just making sure I'm making all of these attempts opposed to uh, you know, going and now shooting threes because I know threes will get me seen. Threes will get me paid. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it, it really gives, it really gives like I've been tall for a long time and I want to shoot threes and I, I can take, I can make layups so I don't need to rep them as much. So I think he needs to get back to maybe basics a little bit in his training and just understanding um, how to, how to work down low. And another part of that I believe is his, is learning his body as well his straight line drives his uh transition drives you can tell that he doesn't have as much confidence in his body and his his physical stature because he's more comfortable with sweeping layups and things going away from the basket opposed to going through the chest of defenders and going straight up and launching to the rim. You're going away from the basket or doing little touch floaters, trying to quickly get the ball up and over into the rim. Another PSA, like I, like, I, like I said earlier, he is super raw, but the frame is there. He does have to work on his shot close finishing and having touch around the rim. He does not have much touch right now, uh, but Hey, everybody has something to work on. And, and also the third progress point for me is his scoring. Uh, this kind of coincides with the comments I just made about uh, his shot close finishing. You know, he, he just has to understand his body better um, to where he can get himself in positions to get higher quality shots and also uh, develop his, his bag as a ball handler too. Like every four doesn't have to dribble the ball at the rate of a point guard. You don't have to do that, but it, 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 is, it is nice to develop a, a shot creating basket, a space creating basket. And one thing that he does is he, he turns his back a lot during 
uh, during ISO situations and shot creating situations like he'll give you maybe a hand cross uh, or a jab step rip through and then if you meet him there and he can't get to his spot quickly enough he's immediately turning his back to you spinning and trying to go and change direction and get still get downhill that is something that you do when you're not as confident in your handle as uh as maybe you want to be so i think he has a lot of uh, potential there too because i mean he's also just kind of accidentally done some of the craziest things off the dribble because he is so raw but he but he's always going hard he has a high motor he shows effort so his scoring his on one-on-one -on -one situations specifically in half court you know could use some improvement if i'm comparing him to cameron boozer if i'm comparing him to Kopete, it's it's not even close those guys are like you know how we are in the u.s like world-class scores like they 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 really practice with the best of the best and and are, are really grinding just one-on-one -on -one situations and in 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 ball handling and in, in these things and that's just not something that kareem lopez has currently however if you're able to average 20 and a half points in fiba u16 leading all scores that participated in the u16 if you're able to lead the u16 in double doubles if you're able to give, you know, average 32 or put up 32 points against Uruguay, there's something there. So I don't want these these uh, progress points or points of improvement to be looked at and maybe, you know, it overall turned into, oh, Kareem Lopez isn't going to be that good. No, if he, the, the point of this is he is doing so much offensively right now to get my attention that if he was surrounded by or given to the right trainer, team, organization, coach, whatever it may be, he could be a player that is mentioned in the conversation with Cameron Boozer and Kopi legitimately, legitimately. And I think I'll just leave it at that. Kareem Lopez, 60 and a half or 61% projected impact grade six foot eight huge hands huge feet great frame the kid can hoop already super raw super raw but i think he has something i don't think he has something i know he has something and he definitely has my attention from this point forward he's already had it because i he's he's you know taking the reins as the second a scouting report that I put out on Scoutology, but I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled. I saw that uh, maybe a week ago, he's now uh, practicing with the main uh, team, the main uh, Badalona team. That's major, man. At 16 years old, he's practicing with the main squad. That is major, and he already played up in the, in the Spain tournament to U18, U19. Now he's practicing with the main club. He's gonna be one to watch. His physical, like his size, is just it's just can't miss. It's can't miss. And you know, you know how I feel about these guys. Like if I if I'm looking into you and you jump out on on film, like the like he jumped out to me, and I do a Google search and nobody's talking about you, we got to talk about it. And that's why we're talking about it. Kareem Lopez, episode two of Scoutology, power forward, 16 years old. He's an April baby. Very bouncy, athletic. Not super bouncy. Like in terms of my athleticism ranking out of five, I gave him a three. But noticeably bouncy on cam, on film. I really just want to like, I want to, I really, I'm really to the point where I want to reach out to him and be like, yo, let's get in the gym. Like I got the keys. And Kareem, if you're watching this, yo, we got the keys over here. We can, I'm looking at that 2026 mock draft like, we can we can get your name on there first round and i'm not just saying that i'm not just saying that to the listeners he can be a first round let me let me let me make this plain because i feel like y'all not listening to me he can be a first round pick in the 2026 draft out of mexico point blank period he can be a first round pick he can be a first round pick he's so raw right now but that rawness is what lets me know, like, there's, there's, ooh, untapped potential. Untapped potential. And I'm going to keep my eyes peeled. Once again, 
Kareem Lopez. Y'all go check him out. Uh, Juvent Juventud Badlona. Juventud Badlona. Somebody on YouTube is going to let me know if I'm saying that right or not. Y'all let me know if I'm pronouncing that right. Scoutology, episode two. Make sure you follow on Instagram out at scout.ology. Go ahead and subscribe on Substack, scoutology.substack.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow me as well on Twitter and Instagram. I am Quentin Mayo. My at name is at Real Quentin Mayo. The dogs are barking. It means it's time for me to go inside and give every animal out here their space back. Until next time, it's been your boy Quentin Mayo. I'm out. God bless.